Have you ever noticed that South America and Africa fit together like puzzle pieces? Why is that so? Is it mere coincidence? Alfred Wegener asked himself this very question over 100 years ago. To answer it, he combined two different geoscientific observations on the theory of plate tectonics. Firstly, that Mesosaurus fossils as well as those of other animals and plants were found on both continents. And also the fact that they were found in similar geological rock formations made of clay and chalk. Secondly, that the continental outlines of Africa and South America fit together like puzzle pieces. From these observations, Wegener concluded that the surface of the Earth consists of individual plates and that these plates are moving constantly. This means that Africa and South America used to be part of a single contiguous landmass. Today we know that these lithospheric plates are swimming on a more liquid layer under them, the asthenosphere. Hello and welcome. In this video I will be showing you the three typical types of plate boundaries. You will learn how the global distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes makes it possible to distinguish the various plate boundaries and the direction in which the lithospheric plates are moving at these boundaries. The lithosphere is a mostly solid layer approximately 100 km thick. It consists of the Earth's crust as well as the uppermost section of the Earth's mantle. After Wegener presented his idea that the lithospheric plates were moving about on the Earth's surface, new measurement methods over the following years yielded additional observations. These underscore and refine the theory of plate tectonics. It is a good example of how the combination of various observations can lead to a better understanding of what goes on beneath the Earth's surface. Two such observations are the occurrence of volcanoes and earthquakes on Earth. Both make it possible for us to better understand the processes going on inside the Earth. Shown here is a global earthquake distribution map. Large circles indicate strong earthquakes and small ones indicate weaker earthquakes. From the map it is clear that earthquakes are clustered along defined lines. Furthermore, the distribution of volcanoes also follows a specific pattern. Large symbols on the map indicate clusters of volcanoes. However, if we superimpose both distributions, we see that there are differences. What differences are there in the global distribution of seismicity and volcanoes? For example, while Japan experiences both volcanic and seismic activity, the foot of the Himalayas and California experience earthquakes, but there are no volcanoes there. Hence, not all plate boundaries appear to be the same. But how do they differ from each other? We primarily categorize plate boundaries according to the direction in which adjacent plates move towards each other. We distinguish between a total of three types of plate boundaries. Firstly, transform faults, where two plates slide past each other horizontally. Secondly, convergent boundaries at which two plates move towards each other. Thirdly, divergent boundaries where two plates are pushed apart from each other. Where do seismicity or volcanism occur at plate boundaries? Let me demonstrate this to you via five examples from locations across the globe. The first place we are looking at is California, where earthquakes regularly occur due to a transform fault between the North American plate and the Pacific plate. What you see here is a fence that has been shifted horizontally by about one meter after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake which occurred along the San Andreas Fault. Generally, volcanism does not occur along transform plate boundaries. We distinguish between two different types of convergent boundaries. In the first, an oceanic plate moves beneath another plate. An example of this can be seen in Japan. Here, the older, denser Pacific plate is pushed under the younger Eurasian plate, which is visible in this section of stone near Kobe. A catastrophic earthquake occurred here in 1995. When such a subduction occurs, oceanic lithosphere is pushed under another oceanic or continental plate. 
The result is volcanism, which is triggered by fluids in the subducting plate. In the second case, a continental plate collides with another continental plate. This results in the formation of a mountain range. A prime example of this are the Himalayas, which continue to increase in height due to the movement of the Indian subcontinent. Volcanism does not occur with this type of plate boundary. Divergence zones may occur in oceans or on continents. One example of the latter is the Great Rift Valley in eastern Africa. In this case, the plates are drifting apart, that means Africa is literally breaking apart, albeit extremely slowly. Here you see a photo of the edge of a rift that is moving away from the center of the rift. However, divergence can also occur in the oceans at what are called mid-ocean ridges. For example, in the Pacific, at the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate. Here, material from the Earth's interior is brought to the surface and new seafloor is formed, which is then pushed away to both sides. Indicators of such zones are black smokers, hydrothermal vents, from which hot water flows. They are a weak form of volcanism. Up to this point, we have spoken about seismicity and volcanism at plate boundaries. However, earthquakes and volcanism can also occur within lithospheric plates. The volcanic islands of Hawaii, for example, are fed by such a hotspot, which more or less burns a hole in the overlying plate. Today, GPS technology confirms the concept of plate tectonics. GPS measurements serve not only to locate a receiver, but can also be used to determine the distance between two measurement stations. Earthquakes can provide information about the direction of underground movements. With the help of GPS, it is also possible to accurately measure the speed of the movements. These measurements can detect plate movements on the scale of several centimeters per year, which is approximately the rate at which fingernails grow. Let me summarize once again. Earthquakes occur at all plate boundaries. Volcanism, on the other hand, typically occurs at convergent lithospheres or as a hotspot in the interior of the plates. Volcanism also occurs in a weaker form during the creation of new seafloor at divergent mid-ocean ridges. In addition, earthquakes and volcanism may also occur together at other plate boundaries. For example, when plate boundaries change their type over the course of millions of years or when hotspots occur at plate boundaries. Finally, let's come back to Alfred Wegener. You have seen that combining various geoscientific observations can lead to a deeper understanding of the processes going on in the Earth. Just like how Wegener used such observations to formulate a new hypothesis over a century ago, interdisciplinary work being done today can also bring about scientific progress. <laughs>